just the mock quiz. All right, so I started recording. I'm gonna go over just the mock quiz. Uh, I worked out. I have a worked out key. I just posted it on Canvas. So there's that on on there as well. If you want to go through that, and I'm just gonna go through the problems here. All right, so we're gonna start with number one. For number one. We have 28 B squared plus 17 B D minus 65 B squared. So I'm gonna factor this out. And when you're factoring something like this out, instead of multiplying A with C and trying to find factors of that huge number, whatever that is, and going about it that way, an easier way is to kind of figure out, well, what are the factors of my leading coefficient? in my last term. So I have 28 and I have a negative 65. So for 28, my factors are gonna be one and 28, two and 14, four and seven. For negative 65, it's gonna be one and 65, five and 13. Where one of these has to be negative, I'm not sure which one, but for over those two pairs, one of them has to be negative. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start picking pairs, and I'm going to see, well, which one uh, has, has a pair when I cross-multiply them. Will they combine to give me a positive 17? So I'm not going to go through each pair, but the one that does work is 4 and 7, 5 and 13. Right? If I take this 4 and I multiply it with the 13, I get 52. And when I take the seven and multiply it with the five, I get a 35. So the way I know I knew that this was gonna be the pair that works when I multiply them together, I'm kind of guessing and checking the pairs. I, excuse me, I can get I can see that 52 and 35 are 17 away. So if I, I can see that well, if I subtracted them, then I'll have a I'll have a positive 17 that I wanted, right? So that tells me that 35 needs to be negative. So I need 52 minus 35 to get that positive 17. So if 35 has to be negative, that tells me the five has to be negative. Because remember, the only thing that can be negative is gonna be from your constant term or the last term in your trinomial. Everyone with me with that? That's like the hard part of this problem. Does that make sense or any questions about what I did? All right, so once you have your pair, you know which one works. You can start making your uh, factor form. So I draw my parentheses first. And the pair that comes from the leading coefficient, that's 28, which is the 4 and the 7, that's going to go first. So 4B and 7B. And then I need to figure out, well, where does the 13 go? And where's the negative 5? The way I think about it is that in this pair right here, I multiply the 4 with the 13. And the only way 4 and 13 can multiply together is if, if they're in different parentheses. So the 13 has to go in the other parentheses because that's the only way I can get the 4, the 4B to multiply that 13. And the same logic goes with the negative 5. The only way 7 and negative 5 can multiply together is if they're in different parentheses. And then that D at the end kind of just throw it in the end. I just kind of ignore it. You don't really need to deal with it. You just kind of put the D at the end. So that's how you get that D squared. And that's going to be your factor form. So I know the hard part about this problem is figuring out the pairs and the um, the leading coefficients and the constant term. Any questions about any of this stuff? Are we okay with that? Are we ready to go into number two? All right, let's go into number two. For number two, the problem is 24a cubed b to the six minus 375a cubed times c cubed. So that's number two. The very first thing you should always do anytime you're factoring anything out is always plot your GCF. When you plot your GCF first, you're making the expression simpler and make it a lot easier to actually factor it out. And if I look at this, uh, these two terms right here, my GCF is a 3a cubed. So when I plot that 3a cubed, what I'm left with 
is 8b to the 6. And then 125 or negative 125 cubed. So when I'm in this form, I can see that 8b to the 6 minus 125c uh, c to the 6 power. That's a difference of cubes. I can tell that because 8 is a perfect cube, b to the 6 is a perfect cube, 125 is a perfect cube, and so is c to the 3. Remember, if your exponent is divisible by 3, that means it's a perfect cube. So what I get is I get something in the form of a cubed minus b cubed. And that's going to factor out to a minus b times a squared plus a b plus b squared. Right, that's the factor. That's the uh, factoring pattern for a difference of cubes. When it's in the form of a cube minus b cubed, or a perfect cube minus another perfect cube, it's going to factor out to that pattern right there. And if I look at this right here, what I'm going to do to figure out well, what's my a and what's my b? You're just going to take the cube root of both these terms. Well, what's the cube root of a b to the sixth? That's going to be two b squared. And how about 125 or 125 c to the third power? We take the cube root of that, you get 5c. Or you kind of think of it as 5c all cubed gives me 125c to the third. 2b squared, when you, when you cube that, that gives you 8b to the sixth. And then once you have your a and your b, you're just going to go ahead and plug it in. Do you have a question? Yeah, you wouldn't put that. So you know how we have two different factoring patterns, the sum of cubes and the difference of cubes? The reason we have two of them is so that you don't have, ever have to have a negative for your A. So your A and your B should always be positive. Uh, and that's why we have two different factoring patterns. That's why they look really, like, really similar because you could factor this out with a sum of cubes with having a negative B. That's kind of confusing. So we just say there's two factoring patterns. Just keep your A and your B always positive. So from here, we're just going to go ahead and plug them into your factoring pattern right there. So your a is 2b squared minus your uh, b term of 5c. Then you have a squared, so 2b squared all squared is going to give you 4b to the fourth. Then you're going to add to that a times b, so 2b squared times 5c. Then 2 times the 5 is 10. Then you have b squared times c. Then you have b squared, which will be 25c squared. And that's your final answer. This second part right here is not going to factor out because this is in the form of a squared plus a b plus b squared. It's not really ever going to factor out because it's an a b in the middle and not a two a. Any questions about that? Go ahead. Yes, I forgot about that. Thank you. Don't forget GCM. So that's going to be the final answer. Good. So yeah, so we have a, a, a sum of cubes instead. It's a cube plus b cube. That's a plus b. Then a squared minus a b plus b squared. The first signs are always going to match. The first signs always match, and then the third one is like. Any other questions, guys? Are we okay? All right, let's go on to number three. For number three, we have 392x squared minus 168x plus 18. So remember the very first thing you should always do anytime you're factoring anything out is always factor out your GCF. And the GCF here is two. So you factor out a two, what you're left with is 196 X squared minus 84 X plus nine. So the first thing you should always do is factor out your GCF, which is a two, and that's what you get. And then from here, 
anytime you see that your first term and your last term are perfect squares, like in this case, I have an A squared and a B squared, you always want to check your middle term to see, well, is it a perfect square trinomial, right? So 196 is 14 squared. So in this case, my A would be 14 and my B would be three. So what I want to do is I want to check, well, what's 2AB? Because if this was a perfect square trinomial, it was like a minus 2AB, then this will factor out really easily to A minus B all squared. So you always, if you see a perfect square in the beginning and the end of a trinomial, always double check your middle term because it's pretty easy to do. To see, does it equal 2AB? Because if it does, you can factor it out right away. So 2AB here will be 2 times 14, it's really 14X times 3. So you have 28 times 3, which is 84X. So it does equal each other. So since this is a perfect square trinomial, I can figure out that this is going to factor out to just my A minus B all squared. So just 14X minus 3 all squared. And this is also another reason why you should always factor out your GCF first. Because if you try to do this problem without factoring out your GCF, you're going to have like a terrible time trying to find pairs of three, uh, factors of 392 and pairs of factors of 18 that add up to give you negative 168. But if you just saw the GCF, you factored it out, you have a perfect square trinomial, you'll be done within like a minute or two minutes. Any questions about that? Does that make sense? All right. Let's go on to number four. Number four, you want to find f of 12 over 11. If f of x equals 64, x squared minus 144x plus 81. Right, so this looks a lot worse than it actually is. What it's saying is just that figure out what fx will be when f is 12 over 11. So you could just take the 12 over 11 and plug it in. That'll be you know pretty hard to do. But an easier way to go about this is to take f of x and see, well, can it factor out? And if I look at my f of x, I have that perfect square in the beginning and the end of the trinomial, right? I have an a squared and a b squared. So what I want to do is check, well, is the middle term a to a b? Because if it is, it's a perfect square trinomial. I can factor it really quickly and I can solve it, you know, really easy. Now, if you're not with a coach, director, sponsor, or All right, so to figure out my A, I'll take the square root of that 64x squared. So I have 8x. The square root of 81 is 9. So 2AB will be 2 times 8x times 9, which is, I think it's actually 144. So it is a perfect square trinomial. That's great because it makes my life a lot easier. So you do that 2AB part to kind of confirm that it is a perfect square trinomial. And when you do that, you can factor it out really easily. I can just say right away, well, f of x is just going to be a minus b now, all squared. So it's going to be 8x minus 9 squared. So to figure out f of 12 over 11, I can just plug it into this formula right here, and it makes it a lot easier to solve out. So f of 12 over 11 will be 8 times 12 over 11 minus 9, but 9 is the same thing as 99 over 11. I'm doing that so I think I have the same denominator, so it'll be a lot easier to solve out. So 8 times 12 is uh, 96 minus 99 over 11, all squared. 96 minus 99 is a negative 3 over 11 all squared, which is 9 over 128. And that's your answer. Any questions about that? Makes sense. All right, let's go on to number five. Or is anyone still copying Neil Neil no longer? <laughs> All right. Number five. 18 
a to the fifth b squared minus eight a cubed b to the fourth plus 1152 a squared b to the eighth minus 512 b to the tenth. Test number five. And the very first thing you should always do anytime you're uh, factoring anything out is always take out the GCF. And if I look at 18, negative 8, 1152, and negative 512, they're all divisible by 2. So I know I can factor out a 2. And I can see that all four of these terms also have at least a B squared. So I can factor out a B squared as well. And when you do, what I'm left with is a 9, a cubed minus four a cubed b squared plus what is that 576 a squared b to the sixth minus uh 256 yeah 256 b to the eighth so you factor out your two b squared this is what you're left with. Go ahead. It should down the way. Thank you. Nine eight to the fifth. So this is what you get. And since I have four terms, what I'm gonna look for is I'm gonna see can I do factor by group? We haven't really talked about uh, factoring four terms yet. So if you see four terms, chances are you have to do factor by group. And to do that, what you're gonna do is you're gonna group up. Your first two and your last two pairs, and then factor out the GCF out of both those pairs. So when I factor, when I uh, grouped up the nine, the uh, nine a to the fifth minus four a cubed times b squared, the GCF there, I can see that they both have an a cubed. So I know that I can factor out an a cubed, and I'll be left with nine a squared minus four b squared. And then for the second part, 576 and 256, they have a GCF of uh, 64. So I can factor out 64. And what I do, what I'm left with is 9a squared minus 4b squared. Or uh, 64b to the 6. In fact, you have 64 b to the sixth, and that's what I'm be left with. Everyone with me so far? Are we okay? All right, so then from here, what I'm going to look at is I'm going to see, well, after I factor out my GCF, is what's left over the exact same. So what's left over in these parentheses, they need to be the exact same. And if they are, that means factor by grouping works. If they're not the same, sometimes they go back to the uh, previous part, and you have to flip your middle two terms. So sometimes I think it was on the worksheet that um, if the middle two, if the factor by grouping didn't work, you have to flip the middle two terms and then it is going to work. So sometimes you kind of have to do that. But since they are the same, all you need to do is bring down your GCF. And then that parentheses, that's the exact same. What I can do is factor it out. And the GCF that I pulled out that becomes my other factor. Is everyone with me? Any questions? All right. So this is where I'm at right now. And I can see that this blue parentheses and this green one, they're both, they both can still be factored down. So I'm gonna copy down my GCF. So to be squared and this blue parentheses, that's a difference of squares. So I know that I'm gonna get an A minus B, A plus B. So this 9A squared, that's gonna be 3A minus 2B, then 3A plus 2B. And then for the green one, I have an A cubed in the 64B to the sixth. So my A term, that's just gonna be A. And my B term is 
for B squared. So that's what I'm gonna plug into my factoring, my uh, factoring pattern to get what that what this green parentheses is gonna factor out into. So it's a sum of cubes. So I start with a sum in the beginning. So it's a plus b. So a plus four b squared. And then it's a squared. And so in this case, it's just a squared minus a times b. So four a b squared. Then plus my b squared, which will be sixteen. B to the fifth. That's gonna be your final answer. Any questions about that? Are you ready to keep going? Do you want to copy a little longer? So the rest really aren't that bad, except for number 10, which is, it's not bad, it's just long. Are we good here? Anyone still need a little longer? Pretty good? All right. Number six. We have 72 x squared plus 114x minus 420. So I know I keep saying it, but the very first thing you should always do is look for a GCF to factor out. Because if you don't, your life's gonna be a lot harder, uh, especially problems like this. So for here, I'm gonna factor out my GCF, which is six. And what I'm left with is a 12x squared plus 19x. Minus 70. So that's what I have. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what I did before. I'm going to list out factors of my leading coefficient and my constant. Right, so I need to factor out 12x squared, 19x, and negative 70. So for 12, my factors are 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. Factors of negative 70 are 1 and 70, 2 and 35, 5 and 14, 7 and 10. So now we're going to do what we did before. We're going to figure out which pair works, where if I cross multiply them, I can combine them to get a positive 19x. At the same time, I have a negative 70, so only one of these two factors right here can be negative. So in this case, what ends up working we're not going to go through each one and get to check them. But the one that ends up working is 3 and 4, 7 and 10. So if I take the 3 and I multiply it with 7, that gives me 21. When I take the 4 and multiply it with 10, I get 40. So what I can see here is that 21 and 40 are 19 apart. So that kind of tells me that this is the pair that's going to work because they are 19 apart, and what I want is a positive 19. I actually need to figure out, well, which one's going to be negative, right? I want a positive 19x. So I know that if I make the 21 a negative, negative 21 plus 40 gives me the positive 19 that I want. And the only thing that can be negative comes from the constant term. That's how I know that the 7 is the one that needs to be negative. Go ahead. You could these that is an option. You could do it that way. Uh, it's that you do three and the ten. What I get so three and ten. That's thirty, right? And then you're left with four and seven, right? Which is twenty-eight. So things you could pair them up any way you want to. If I pick three and four and seven, ten, this could be an option for another problem. Is that in this case at thirty and twenty-eight, that's only two apart, but I want them to be nineteen apart. So you could pair. You can. Pay them up any way you want to as long as you cross multiply them. You just need to make sure that the sum of them gives you your B term. Answer your question? Great. So we get 19 here. That's what I wanted. 
So now when I want to go ahead and factor my, my uh, problem, I'm going to write out my uh, GCF so I don't forget it. The three and the four, or the factor pair that came from my leading coefficient, that's going to go first in my parentheses. So I have 3x and 4x. And now I need to figure out, well, where's the negative 7 and the 10? So the 3 is multiplying with the negative 7. And the only way 3 and negative 7 can multiply together is if they're in different parentheses. So that's why the negative 7 goes with the 4x. And that's why the 10 goes with the, with the uh, 3x. And that's going to be a factor form. Any questions about that? Does that make sense? All right. Let's go on to number seven. Number seven, we have 30x squared minus 89x plus 63. So we're going to do it the same way because uh, that's some really big numbers. There's no GC you have to take out. So I'm kind of stuck with this. So I have to figure out, well, what are the factors of 30? That's 1 and 30, 2 and 15, 3 and 10, 5 and 6. I'm doing the same thing with 63. So I have 1 and 63, 3 and 21, I think it's 7 and 9. So you're going to list out your pairs of uh, factors for each number, the leading coefficient and your constant term. And a little trick to kind of make this one a little easier to solve out. If you see that your constant term here is a positive, right? It's a positive number, but you want your B term to be negative. The only way this will work out is if all your terms, for your constant term or all your factors are negative. That's the only way this will work out. So I know that whatever I pick, these numbers have to be negative. That's the only way. I can multiply it with these positive numbers to get a negative uh, sum. Does that make sense what I'm saying? All right. So I'm going to start choosing what pairs are going to work. So in this case, it's 5 and 6 and 7 and 9. That's the pair that works. So the way to pair them up once you figure out your pair that works is 5 and negative 7 and 6 and negative 9. So 5 and negative 7 is negative 35. 6 and negative 9 is negative 53. See, negative 89. And this is what I mean when I said that if your constant term is positive and your B term is negative, the factors for the constant has to be negative. Because if these weren't negative, there's no way to multiply with a positive 5 and positive 6 to get that negative 89. So I figured out which, pair, which pairs work. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in my factored form. So 5 and 6 come from the leading coefficient. So I have 5x and 6x. I multiply the 5 with the negative 7. So that means I have to put the negative 7 in the opposite parentheses. And the negative 9 goes in the opposite parentheses. And that's going to be your factored form. Any questions about that one? Are we good? All right, let's go on to number 14 or number eight. Or is anyone still copying? All right. Number eight, uh, 14 m squared minus 28m minus 336. So for this, I'll always look for a GCF. In this case, the GCF was 14. So I can factor out of 14. And I'm left with m squared minus 2m minus 24. So I factored out of 14, and now I'm left with m squared minus 2m minus 24. That's pretty basic to uh, factor out, right? I just need factors of negative 24 that add up to negative 2. That's going to be m minus 6. Get m minus 6 and have m plus 4. Right, negative 6 times 4 gives you negative 24. Negative 6 plus 4 gives you negative 3. And that's your factored form for number 
All right, for number nine. We have x minus four squared, x minus two squared, minus 16, x minus four, x plus two. So that's uh, problem nine. The first thing you always wanna do is factor out your GCF. And I can see that for both these terms, they both have an x minus four, x plus two. So I can factor that out. So when I factor out that x minus four, x plus, x minus four, x minus two, what I'm left with is still one more pair of x minus four and x minus twos on the first term. And when I took the x minus four and x minus two out of the negative 16, x minus four, x minus two, all I'm left with is the negative 16. Everyone with me so far? So once you do that, I have to fix what's right here in black because you don't want any kind of term that's like half factored, half not. I don't want that. So what I want to do is I want to expand out the x minus four, x minus two, combine it with the negative 16, and see if that factors or not. The x minus four, x minus two. Leave it alone. The x minus four times x minus two. Go ahead. Did I copy down wrong? Oh, these are all the pluses. I just messed it up. I'm sorry. Yeah, those are also the plus two. Sorry about that. We good? All right. So I'm going to multiply out x minus four and x plus two. So what you get when you do that is x squared minus two x minus eight, all minus that 16. And then you add like terms. X minus four. X plus two, X squared minus two X minus 24. And now I wanna see, well, does X squared minus two X minus 24 factor out? And in this case it does. So when you factor that out, you get X minus six, X plus four. And that's your answer. Any questions about number nine? Are you okay with that? All right, let's go on to number 10. Number 10. I have x plus seven cubed minus two x minus three cubed. So anytime you have like expressions raised to a power like this, typically it's a lot easier if you kind of take it and you uh, give it a variable. So in this case, I can say, well, a is x plus seven and b is two x minus three. Right, I can go ahead and just kind of label that as my, my A and my B terms. And when I plug it back in, what I get is an A cubed minus B cubed. And that's just kind of the uh, basic, the, uh, basic uh, factoring pattern for a difference of cubes. So I know that this is going to equal A minus B times A squared plus AB plus B squared. But remember, what I want to factor isn't a cubed minus b cubed, is x plus seven cubed minus two x minus three cubed. So I have to plug the a and the b back into the equation. And when you do, you get x plus seven minus your b of two x minus three. And then I have my a squared, which is x plus seven all squared. 
plus my a times b, which is x plus 7, 2x minus 3, plus my b squared, which is 2x minus 3 uh, squared. So from here, you need to start adding like terms. So in the first parentheses, if I was to distribute this negative in, I have an x minus 2x, which is negative x. 7 minus negative 3 is a positive 10. And what makes this problem not hard, but really tedious, is that the second parentheses, I have to expand up each one of these parts, and I have to combine them all to, or combine all like terms. And anytime you find a factor of something, you don't want anything that's kind of half factored, half not. Like this whole expression is kind of partly factored. You don't want that. So I need to expand it all out and combine like this. So x plus 7 squared is x squared plus 14x plus 49. x plus 7 times 2x minus 3. Uh, that is 2x squared plus 11x. Minus 21. Then 2x minus 3 squared is going to be 4x squared minus 12x plus 9. So each of these parts came from the um, multiplication above it. Everyone with me so far, are we okay? So from here, we're just gonna add like terms of negative x plus 10. x squared, 2x squared, and 4x squared is a 7x squared. 14x, 11x is 25x, minus 12x is a positive 13x. 49 and 21 is 28, plus 9 is a positive 37. Right? Yeah. And that's your final answer. I guess you could write the first parentheses as 10 minus x, but it doesn't. Make sense. So this problem number 10 is really just really tedious or kind of really unnecessarily long rather than hard. It's just a lot of extra work that it's really unnecessary. But any questions about that or anything about the mock quiz or anything about the quiz tomorrow? Let me go ahead and stop the recording. Let me do that. So is there any also